Right guys, Glasgow Central Railway Station this afternoon and I am taking the direct train service down to Manchester Piccadilly with TransPennine Express. Now there are several coach companies that run a service from Glasgow to Manchester, National Express, Megabus, Flixbus, but if you want to get there two hours quicker you've got to take the train haven't you? I know it costs a little bit more but let's go and see how it compares and I will catch you on board. Cheers for now. At Glasgow Central is the northern terminus of the West Coast Main Line, which will take you all the way down to London, and that's predominantly used by Avanti West Coast. Now, as you would expect, there are also extensive local services covering the surrounding area, all of which are operated by ScotRail. Now, opened way back in 1879, it has 17 platforms, two of which are on the subterranean lower level concourse. It's the 12th busiest station in Britain and when you look around at all the restored features of the main concourse it won't surprise you to know that it is a Category A listed building. And I think you'll agree, it is so much better than its counterpart at the other end, London Euston. Anyway, uh, we wouldn't be going that far today. Uh, displayed on the main departures board is our train, the 1508 Trans Pennine Express Direct Service to Manchester Piccadilly. Uh, or, or Manchester Airport, if, if you want to be precise. It was on time and at a platform. So, uh, yeah, let's go and check it out and we'll see what we get for our money, shall we? And here she is, a Class 397 Nova 2, an electric multiple unit built by the Spanish manufacturer CAF uh, to run between Glasgow and either Manchester or Liverpool. It's capable of 125 miles per hour. These five car units consist of four standard class carriages and one first class carriage at the rear. Now I've been on one of these trains before uh, but for a much shorter journey and so I was interested to see how comfortable it would prove to be on a far longer trip. Uh, this one was timetabled to take three hours and 19 minutes in total. Now, first impressions upon boarding were yeah I still love the colour scheme of the Trans Pennine interiors. I think it makes the whole carriage look bright and spacious. And you'll notice here that almost all the seats in this 2-2 standard carriage configuration are table seats. Uh, the coach uh, letter is clearly displayed on the TV display here in case you miss it on the exterior. And there's also ample luggage space at both ends of the carriage and above the seats. A leg room beneath the table looks a bit tight, uh, which I do tend to find with these layouts. Now let me know what you think are the best and worst trains for legroom in your experience. Now the seats have a kind of integrated anti-macassar, if that's the right terminology here. They're a bit firmer than I remember and yeah, some of them are starting to look a bit grubby where the stains have appeared. Yeah, to be honest, uh, they could probably do with a clean trans -penine. We've got conventional power and USB sockets between the seats and a digital reservation display above the window. And note there are no blinds on the windows, uh, which is a bit of a downside if the sun ever did decide to make an appearance in this country, of course. Right, let's get going on this very quiet train down to Manchester and uh, enjoy some of the sights of the West Coast Main Line as we head south. And I'll speak to you again once we've crossed over the border into England.
Okay, so we left Carlisle, and it was around about this point that Trans Pennine checked everybody's tickets. Now, I'm not going to do an extensive review of the loo this time around, but I will link to my previous Trans Pennine video if you're interested in that. Uh, suffice to say, there were no issues, everything was fully stocked and functioning as you would expect. Uh, note that uh, whilst most of the toilets on this train are quite small, there is an accessible toilet in Coach E. And now right at the front of Coach A, where I was, uh, you'll find room for four bicycles. You need to reserve these prior to boarding, uh, which can be done up to 15 minutes before travel. And then you get a little red reserved light, same as a seat really. Now transporting bikes must be much easier on the train than on the coach. Have you ever taken a bicycle on the coach? Or is it even possible? If you have, then uh, please let me know how you do it in the comments below. Uh, one other part of the carriage I thought I'd show you is the airline style priority seating. Now this is located nearest to the doors, uh, which is what you'd expect really, isn't it? And it has pretty good legroom, which is again what you need really. The drop down table was robust and of an ample size, uh, with this handy extender here. It was nice and clean too. And as you can see, the priority seating areas have their own call assistance button and emergency alarm. Uh, Wi-Fi, uh, well, it connected, uh, but it wasn't able to display things such as social media images. So, uh, to be honest, it probably wasn't worth the hassle, provided you've got a decent data package. The trolley service is back on TransPennine. Uh, it took a while to get down the train, but they had plenty of snacks and hot and cold drinks available. And note they seemed to have a larger selection of alcoholic beverages than anything else on the menu. I had a coffee. Uh, leaving Penrith, we were making good progress, we were doing about 170 kilometres an hour at this point. The weather outside wasn't up to much to be honest, typical Lake District weather maybe. We were staring out of the window at the grey clouds. It reminded me a bit of my dreary trip up to Glasgow with Megabus the night before. And believe me, the less I thought about that, the better. However, I do need to talk to you about the transport choices available if you want to travel this route yourself. Now, there are several coach companies that will take you from Glasgow down to Manchester direct, and namely National Express, the aforementioned Megabus, and also Flixbus. Now they all take around 5 hours to make the trip according to their websites and compared to the 3 hours and 19 minutes on the train. Now I looked at comparative pricing for the day I took this journey at around about the time reasonably close to when I was travelling. A Megabus were the cheapest at £6.99 plus their £1 booking fee. A Flixbus were second at £8.99 uh, but then they also had a £1 booking fee. And their National Express came in at exactly £10, and you can avoid their £1 booking fee by registering with them. Now I paid £29.70 for this train journey, that included a £2 discount voucher on the TrainPal website, which is considerably more isn't it? And now obviously the train is nearly two hours quicker, it's more spacious and more comfortable in my opinion. But at the end of the day, if you're not pushed for time, you can do a lot with the £20 you've saved by going on the coach, can't you? Now thinking back to my overnight experience on the coach, I think it's a whole different ball game compared to doing the same journey in the day, and when you don't really feel the need to try and get some sleep. And with a company like Flixbus, for example, you can pay a little bit more to just reserve the seat next to you if you want to. Now, I guess it depends on how much value you place on your time and uh, comfort to an extent. Because don't forget, you can get up and stretch your legs on the train. Uh, well, these are my thoughts anyway. And I would love to hear yours, so um, yeah, please, as always, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, we soon reached Lancaster, where there was another Trans Pennine Express Class 397 waiting on the other platform. Uh, this one was heading up to Edinburgh, uh, which is the other option there uh, when travelling north up to Scotland. And then after Lancaster, it's about 20 minutes to Preston, uh, which is one of my favourite stations on the West Coast Main Line. Uh, and then it's straight down to Manchester really, Oxford Road first, and then my final destination, which would be Manchester Piccadilly.
Right guys, that was Glasgow Central to Manchester Piccadilly on the Trans Pennine Express. Class 397-397-002. Bang on time. Another great service by Trans Pennine Express. I really enjoy their trains actually. It's clean. There's a trolley service on board. Just um, no issues whatsoever. I'm off now to catch my final train, uh, which is the transport for Wales, Manchester Piccadilly down to Shrewsbury, <laughs> and then go and get some rest, I think. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on another adventure soon, and as always, guys, cheers for now.